and now I'll show you how to perform mesh analysis on circuits that contain dependent sources. Frankly speaking, there's no difference whether it's independent or dependent. Just the dependent source here will just add a constraint equation because it contains an I0. So let me show you how to do that. But just to make things a little bit more interesting, what I will do is I'll assume that the currents are not necessarily flowing all counterclockwise or clockwise. So I'll assume that I1 is actually flowing through this. Um, clockwise and I2 I'm going to assume that it's actually flowing um, counterclockwise and I3 is flowing um, clockwise in here. This will just make things a little bit more interesting. Okay again these assumptions are up to you. You can go either way. They're all the same as long as you follow the procedure I'm about to show you. All right so let's figure out what these mesh currents are. So I'll, I'll start with the first mesh in here. So I'll just zoom out a little bit and I will just say well Okay, so for the first mesh, okay, mesh one, um, okay, and uh, what I will do is I'll basically start with the 24, the 10, and then the 12, okay. So it will be negative 24, because the current is actually going to the negative side first. Remember, we're writing KVL equations, and then in here what we have is a plus, and I will say, well, it is 10 times, and the way I'm going to do that is like it's I1. And remember, from the perspective of the mesh I'm actually focusing on, this is the mesh that I have. So I recognize that there are three meshes or three windows. This is the mesh I'm interested in. So from the perspective of the mesh I have, I'll just basically say, I'll start by saying this is here is I1. Okay, what about the other mesh currents that are affecting this 10 ohms? So you'll see that the I2 is affecting it, and based on the assumptions of the mesh current um, directions that I've done, I will tell you the I2 is also going downward in the same direction as I1. So what you do is you say plus I2. So I1 and I2 are being added together, um, or you can assume it to, to generate basically the I0 if you think about it. That's what it's generating. It's actually the I0. I'll just write it in here so that when we come back to the I0, you'll see it because we need it for the um, dependent source in here. Okay, so that's good. What happens next? Well, we have the 12, and again, from the perspective of the mesh I'm interested in, it will be plus I1, because I'm interested in the I1 first, and you will see that I2 also have I3 affecting it, but this time, I3 is actually going upwards, I1 was going downwards, so they're in opposite directions, so we'll say negative I3, and that here is equal zero. Okay, so that's the equation for the first mesh current. You can, of course, um, clean it up. Like, for example, you can tell me, well, let's isolate the I1, I2. Remember, we have I1, I2, I3, so I'm going to isolate them that way. So I can say, well, the I1 here appears as an, uh, 10 and 12. So I can say, well, 10 plus 12 I1. Okay, and then the I2 appears just one time. It's 10 I2. And then the I3 appears as negative 12 I3 and that should be equal to probably 24. So that's the first equation here. Okay, and you continue. Um, let's take a look at the second mesh. Okay, I'll highlight it in here. So this is this mesh in here. So let's write the equation for this mesh. Um, I will just, so that I can, um, so that I don't have to scroll up and down. I'll just do this here. I'll just move it downwards. Okay, it's the same. You can write in any order you want. Actually, I just named them one, two, and three, but they could have been like three, A, B, whatever you want to call them. So here's the mesh two, okay? So mesh two, what we have is I'm gonna start with the 10 and then the 24 and then the four, okay? And again, you can you can start with any of them, it's up to you. So I'll start with by saying it's 10 times, from the perspective of the mesh I'm interested in, we start with I2, and it just happened to be that I1 is also moving downwards like the I2, so I'm gonna do that plus I1, okay? Plus, uh, what I have is like the 24, so the 24, it's only affected by I2, plus the four, the four is affected by I2, and it just happened to be that I2 is actually moving that way, and I3 is moving that way, so they're in the same direction, so that's plus I3, and that here is equal zero. And again, you could rearrange these terms so that you have, um, I believe I1 appears once, so it's 10 I1, I2 appears several times because this is the mesh, the second mesh, so it's 10, and it appears as 24, and it also appears as a four, and plus, uh, I believe I3 appears just one time, it's four I3, and that I believe is equal to zero because there are no voltage sources on this loop in here. So that's the second equation. All right, so let's focus on the last equation in here, so which is the, or the last mesh. So this is the last mesh in here, which is the, mo which is the one, the reason why I'm, I created this, um, this part is just because it has the uh, voltage source in here, which is dependent, okay? We're gonna move that down in here. I'll just do this, okay. So let's write this one here first for mesh three. So here's mesh three. 
Okay, so how do we write it? Again, I'm going to start with the 12, the 4, and then I'll end up with this source in here. So that happened to be 12. From the perspective of the mesh I'm interested in, that will be I3. And then I'll take a look at it. I3 is going upwards. I1 is going downwards. So it has to be negative I1. A few minutes ago, when we wrote it for mesh 1, it was 12 I1 minus I3. Okay, but from the perspective of the mesh I'm interested in, I3 comes in the positive. Plus, I have the 4, and I have I3 plus i2 because if you take a look at it you will see that i3 is going that way and i2 is going that way so they're in the same direction so it must be a plus and then that leaves us with the last one in here and it's just simply it's a voltage source it's similar to the 24 but instead of writing 24 i'll have to say plus 4 i not equals zero and that's about it so all you have to do is just instead of writing, for example, 24 in this case, you just write the equation. Now the equation contains I naught, so you'll have to go out on the circuit and just see, well, I naught is in here. So you can write and tell me, well, the constraint equation is simply um, the constraint equation uh, based on the mesh current. So the I naught is simply, well, you take a look at that, it's actually I1 and I2 and in the same direction as the I naught. So in this particular case, I1, I0, and I2 all in the same direction. So I1 is simply I1 in here, okay? It's simply I1 plus I2. Okay, so what we do is we just take this one here, we'll put it right here, and we'll create, we'll rewrite that second, the, the mesh three equation, and it will be I3 minus I1 plus four, I3 plus I2, okay? Plus four, I1 plus I2. Okay, and that here is equal zero. So you take a look and we have now this equation in here and we have this equation in here and we have this equation. Of course, you can clean that mesh three equation. I didn't clean it. So for example, I1 appears a couple of times now. I have negative 12 plus four and that will be I1 and the I2 becomes four plus four in here and that's I2 and the I3 happens to be um, 12 plus four plus I believe that's it for I3. I3 equals zero, and you can tell me, well, this is the third equation. Okay, that contains all of them, and this is basically the clean version. So the ones that I highlighted, all you have to do is just arrange them. They are actually arranged. We have I1, I2, I3. You arrange them, use Kramer's method or any other methods, for example, and you'll be able to figure out what these values are. So if I told you that these values are the following, um, I can tell you the following here. It, uh, let me just do that. So I1 will be just simply 2.25 amps and I2 will be negative 0.75 amps, and then I3 will be 1.5 amps. And now you can figure out anything you want about, about this circuit. For example, you want I0, it's simply I1 plus I2, okay? So you can just tell me it's 2.25 minus 0.75, and you compute that value and you'll get what that number is. If you're interested, for example, um, what about the voltage across this 12? Well, uh, if you are interested about the voltage across that 12 ohm, what we need to do is we need to figure out what the current going through it is. So if I assume that the current going through it is that way in here, let me just do it in a different color, for example, in here. So I can say, well, I 12 ohms, well, simply I 12 ohms is I1 minus I3, and you substitute the value of I1, 2.25 minus 1.5, you'll get that value of that current. And then from the value of that current, all you have to do is just tell me, well, V of the 12 ohms is just simply I times R. So let me compute that uh, power for you, or that voltage for you. And that would be, the current will be exactly 0 0.75 amps. And of course the voltage will be 0 0.75, that's I times R, which is 12. Okay, and of course we're assuming that the voltage across it, that's here, V 12 ohms. That's how we're assuming it. So passive sign convention tells me like plus, minus, so I have to put the plus in here. Okay, I know the 12, I know the current is going that way, if the voltage is that way. Okay, so all you have to do is just multiply by 12 and you'll get that the voltage across it is just simply nine volts. So that's here is nine volts and you can compute the power, you can compute anything you want about this circuit.